I want to bring in Caitlin Huey Burns, national political reporter for Real Clear Politics and CBSN political contributor. A, a lot of things there. The president pushing for comprehensive yes. background checks, mm -hmm. uh, pushing for help for the mentally ill on that, mm -hmm. and also uh, saying that he's going to use an executive order to get mm -hmm. rid of, deal with the bump stock ban. Mm -hmm. What did you make of that and the fact that he says he wants one bill and not seven? This was fascinating, just given how we have covered these past few years and how difficult it is to get gu any gun le legislation through. He seems to be endorsing a lot of different proposals here, which made me wonder if he actually knows uh, what is in some of these uh, legislative offers. The Mansion Toomey bill uh, that he seemed to be supportive of was um, really vehemently opposed to by the gun lobbies. Um, I, which, was just I just want to point out the Mansion Toomey bill, which was uh, mm -hmm. pushed for after Sandy Hook in exactly. 2013, mm -hmm. focused on background checks. Exactly. Expanding background checks um, to uh, gun shows and closing some of these loopholes. And so um, there were four Democrats at the time that voted against that bill. Uh, there were only four Republicans that voted for it. So uh, that was very interesting to me. Um, we've seen this kind of play before, however. Uh, remember when he had held the same uh, kind of style uh, meeting on immigration, right. um, seemed to be very receptive to a lot of the ideas that were being uh, tossed around. Um, and there were lots of questions about what would come next. Well, we saw what came after that. Um, this is not to diminish this kind of, of um, presentation. I think it's very good for the public to see lawmakers talking about this, especially in the wake of having such student activism mm -hmm. on this issue, wanting to see uh, their representatives work on th this issue. Um, so we'll see where it goes from here. He kind of tasked uh, four of those lawmakers who have been very involved on this issue to come up with something. Uh, it's just not clear exactly what that would be still. You know, it was fascinating because his explanation for why gun mm -hmm. control hasn't been pushed forward was two words, essentially, last mm -hmm. go-round, Barack Obama. Exactly. Uh, but, I mean, for those of us who covered it, mm -hmm. you know, last go-round, President Obama was pretty aggressive about trying to get votes yeah. out, and it, it mm -hmm. didn't pass. It was a narrow uh, loss exactly. on that bill. You're completely right to point that out, and that we've seen this kind of over and over again, that, that doing something that Obama didn't do or wasn't able to get passed is something that kind of fuels uh, Trump in some of these. He likes to unravel the things that, that the president, the former president has done, and and also uh, do things that his predecessors were not able to do. So he's taking that as kind of an impetus to get something done. Uh, but you note exactly right that the president, the former president Obama pushed very hard uh, for Manchin to me, um, and it still did not get get the support it needs. Now. What was interesting is you heard Brian Mast, a congressman from South Florida who lost two legs in, in yeah. Afghanistan, who uh, has been pushing for the ban on the assault weapons, mm -hmm. uh, which is important because he's a Republican, telling the president that he has a unique credibility on this issue because people are more trusting uh, of, of him than they are of the former president as it pertains to the Second Amendment. Um, there's also in polling we've seen uh, wide support for expanding uh, for, for universal background checks. And so I think the president was also kind of internalizing all of that. You know, it was also funny, uh, fascinating, Caitlin, when you saw the one person who was affected by gun violence, Steve Scalise in that room, right. pushing mm -hmm. for conceal and carry, talking about right. that. And mm -hmm. then the president said, not going to pass. Right. That, that was also a fascinating moment, uh, which kind of, you know, did show that he kind of knows where some of these votes could be, even though he was kind of seeming to uh, endorse a lot of things that, that Republicans uh, traditionally have not been behind. Um, the the uh, um, Congressman Scalise was saying that um, they did pass that that bill last year to um, enhance the the current background system, enforce the laws that are on the books. Uh, but that was attached to that concealed carry uh, reciprocity act, and uh, that is how that bill passed. Mm -hmm. And so he was trying to make the point that this is also an important issue to Republicans and their constituencies on the House side. Um, again, they're going to whatever they come up with will face that that dual challenge of getting mm -hmm. something through the Senate and also getting it through the House and, you know, how invested the president will be in something that will take weeks, I'm sure. We heard him repeatedly say that he can write off and take mm -hmm. care of bump stock, do a bump stock ban with an executive order. Right. True? 
There is a lot of controversy around that because the ATF has ruled on a couple of occasions over the past decade that they were not of the authority to rule on that. And so they're, uh, by doing this, doing this by executive order opens up to a lot of legal challenges that could come forth. And that's why you've heard lawmakers on Capitol Hill saying that they want a legislative fix uh, to address this issue so that it is done and they can move on. And there is uh, bipartisan support for that. When you talked about the gun lobby, um, mm -hmm. we, we saw Senator Chris Murphy, of course, who represents right. the state of Sandy Hook, where, where the Sandy Hook shoot, shooting took place in Connecticut. Uh, he said that the gun lobby has veto power. Mm -hmm. It, it, well, we, we've heard this a lot over the past uh, couple of weeks since this this horrific shooting. I would note that, and we've covered Congress, you know that it's more of, of the re, uh, Republicans and their constituencies, the members of the NRA, not necessarily uh, only the lobby itself. And so um, this is what people came to heads with in the last go round of this five years ago, mm -hmm. which is uh, this pushback from constituents, not only in uh, these congressional districts, but also in some of these states where um, Democrats represent states like North Dakota. Uh, West Virginia is another example, but but um, Senator Manchin put a lot of his political capital on the line here to push that forward. Looks like he's prepared to do that again on uh, background checks. There was an interesting exchange on raising the age of purchasing mm -hmm. firearms. I want to play that for you. Yeah. You can't buy a handgun at 18, 19, or 20. You have to wait till you're 21, but you can buy the, the gun, the weapon used in this horrible shooting at 18. Uh, you are going to decide. The people in this room pretty much are going to decide. But I would give very serious thought to it. I, I can say that the NRA is opposed to it, and I'm a fan of the NRA. I mean, there's no bigger fan. I, I'm a big fan of the NRA. They want to do right. These are great people. These are great patriots. They love our country. But that doesn't mean we have to agree on everything. So what do you think? Do you think he's able to get Republicans to move on this, or is it going to be the president versus Republicans? Here? Yeah, I don't think there is an appetite among Republicans to move on this, and uh, this might be just a state issue. Um, it was interesting because I've been talking to gun rights groups over the past several days um, about what they want to see, and they were very troubled by the president bringing up um, that age requirement earlier on, saying that it strips uh, Americans from their Second Amendment rights. Um, they also noted that he did not, he hadn't talked about it in a, the past couple of days. So him bringing it up again today is, is significant, but I don't think there is uh, enough support in Congress for that. You know, when you talk about, you look at how different this scenario is from mm -hmm. previous scenarios. You know, he mm -hmm. talks about a lot of smack talking with former presidents that they didn't do enough. Right. But one thing is that this president is, he, he had dinner with members of the NRA. He clearly mm -hmm. is open about being close to the NRA. Yeah. Do you think that will make a difference? Well, he, he was pointing that out, that he said, look, I sat down with them and I'm prepared to also sit down with you, which is notable. Uh, he was saying that, you know, you guys in this room are more scared of the NRA than I am. Mm -hmm. It is worth noting, though, that the president was backed by the NRA. He uh, has talked very um, in, in tough terms about the Second Amendment. He even charged uh, that Hillary Clinton during the campaign would want to strip away the Second Amendment, which is, of course, was false. And so he has, uh, you know, balanced that rhetoric with trying to do something now. There are lawmakers that were trying to tell him that because of his relationship with the NRA, because of his credibility with the Republican base, that he could perhaps uh, provide some political cover for some of his colleagues. Mm -hmm. We'll see what he does on that. Um, of course, after the, the immigration go round, um, things kind of petered out. And so we'll see whether this momentum continues. He was also very aggressive at talking about men Mental health. I want to play a bite mm -hmm. from the president talking about mental health. We have to confront mental health. There's never been a case that I've ever seen, I'm sure everybody would feel the same, where mental health was so obviously 39 different red flags. I mean, everybody was seeing them. The local police, the state police, the FBI, everybody was seeing that this guy was sick and nothing happened. Do you get the sense that there will be some movement on that? Well, the president has said that he wants this bill to be comprehensive, mm -hmm. so including a lot of different things. I will say that the term comprehensive is something that uh, really deters lawmakers. They're kind of allergic to the term. We've seen that on immigration fights. We've seen that on other bills. Just given the narrow, uh, the narrow majorities that we have, um, a comprehensive bill is very unlikely, I think, to get the, the kind of support it needs, and that's why the president's back 
snacking will be important. Um, this is a there are so many layers to this to, to addressing this issue. You have the mental health component. You heard lawmakers in there talking about um, some of these the state laws that um, you know would would have uh, allow family members to petition the courts to um, have uh, people's uh, guns seized if they're not um, a, a mentally fit. Uh, so that could be could be something looked at as well. Mm -hmm. uh, you also have, of course, all of the things that went wrong within uh, the Broward County Sheriff's Department, all of the tips, uh, the FBI, of course, right. and then you have the issue of the guns. So there are so many layers to this. And I will say also that um, these moments of opportunity to get something done on legislation like this are so few and far between mm -hmm. uh, that lawmakers are going to feel compelled to kind of throw everything in, uh, try to get everything uh, in there to get something out, and that also muddies the system. Monday's the waters, I should say. Still so fascinating to see mm -hmm. this debate taking place. Absolutely. And us being invited to be allowed in to watch. Caitlin Burns, thank you for joining us, Caitlin. Thank you.